Hello, my wonderful, beautiful friends. Guys, welcome back to our slash entitled people, where many of you come to get your daily dose of Karen stories. Guys, listen, I've got another episode of just wild stories, so I hope you're comfy. My friends, I do hope you enjoy the stories today and do hit that subscribe button for future tales. Let's dive in. So my fiance proposed to me a few weeks ago, and he got me the most amazing ring ever. I was so excited that I had to go home to show mom and dad. Now, my mom is one of the most entitled women on this planet, and she just couldn't stand to see me happy. The moment I walked through the door and pranced into the kitchen to show my parents my ring, my mom never even congratulates me. She looks at the ring and immediately turns to my dad and says, Oh honey, we have to upgrade my ring. Lisa's ring is too nice. Now, my mom did say it as a joke, and we all laughed, but I knew deep down inside that she was gonna upgrade her ring, and I was right. It has been a few weeks, and I know mom has gone to numerous stores ring shopping, which at first I was fine with, and kind of teased her because I thought it was silly she was jealous of my ring. I was sitting at home when my phone buzzed, and I got a text from her. I picked up my phone, and what do you know, she sends me a picture of her new ring. And not just any ring. My mom had bought the exact same ring that I have, from the exact same store that my fiancé bought it from. It was a similar shaped diamond, but the diamond was double the size of my diamond. My mom bragged about how good it looks on her finger, and she told me the price, and it was insane how much she spent. When I asked her why she really needed such a large piece, she told me, Well, I can't let my own daughter outshine me. So mom then says that I did not deserve to have a larger ring than hers because I'm so much younger and I'm not even married yet. Whereas she has many years on me and she's earned it. Now the funny thing is, my parents aren't rich. They're actually having money problems and the amount of money my mom spent on a ring just seems irresponsible. I just wanted to rant about my entitled mom. Well my friends, it seems to me that they might have money problems because mom might like to play keeping up with the Joneses. Like, the fact that she didn't let her own daughter have a nicer ring than hers says a lot. And OP better watch out because this does sound like the type of mom that might wear a wedding dress to her own daughter's wedding. I mean, you can't let your own daughter outshine you, right? I'm currently working as a professional mental health nurse. This incident took place back when I was a student nurse and was posted in the pediatric ward. We had a boy in, with a case of viral fever, I think. By the time I started my posting, he had been there for about three to four days. As soon as I entered the ward, the Karen hounded me. She runs up to me screaming and barking orders at me and saying, I have been saying the same thing over and over again, but you people just don't listen, do you? I begin by saying, well, hello, ma'am. I'm sorry, but what seems to be the problem here? This is my first day here, and I really don't know. Karen interrupts me and says, ugh. Why would they give me someone who just started their job? You literally have no experience here. Why are you here if you don't know anything? I'm sick and tired of nobody knowing anything. Go back and send someone who can actually find out what's wrong with my son. Now, the mom was visibly upset, as you can tell. Parents with sick kids tend to be upset, and I've seen my fair share of doctors taking a mouthful. It's understandable. I told her, Ma'am, I apologize again, but if you could just tell me what's wrong, then I might be able to sort it out. Karen says, Listen, I've been telling you people for the past few days that my son does not like apple juice. He likes orange juice. And you should give him that. But nobody's listening to me. He's still getting that same apple juice. And even that's of really bad quality. I told her, Okay, um, that's easy enough to fix. It seems that the good folks down in the kitchen might have it wrong. Don't worry, ma'am. I'll consult with a nutritionist and we'll have this sorted out in no time. Don't you worry. So the mom just scoffs and marches away. I talked with a nutritionist and asked why the kid was being forced to take apple juice when he didn't like it. But she told me the kid wasn't getting apple juice. In fact, he wasn't getting any juice at all. He was getting milk with almost every meal. Now, I was confused. I talked to the mom again and she shouts at me about how I was so stupid like the rest of the staff. Just then, breakfast arrives. And sure enough, the kid has milk and not juice. I tell her, ma'am, the nutritionist suggested milk for your son, and that's what he's getting. He's not getting any apple juice. Karen says, no, you idiot. Now, she literally did say that to me, and doctors do get it all the time. She says, he gets that with his lunch, not breakfast. So deciding to see what the issue was once and for all, I promised her I'll come back at lunchtime to settle the issue. Lunch arrives, and the kid gets, you guessed it, he gets milk. I again pointed out to the mom and she said the kid gets apple juice after lunch. I'm thinking, 
Okay, what? Now, I was really puzzled then, and just then a nurse arrives to administer the afternoon medications. Karen says, See, now he'll be getting that nasty apple juice. And just then, the nurse hangs a bag of saline by the kid's bedside and injected a vial of MVI, which is multivitamin infusion, and connected it with the kid's IV line. The MVI injections we have in our hospital were yellow-colored, and that's when I had the epiphany of what had been her issue. And being the considerate person she was, she confirmed my suspicions with a horrible screech. Karen says, See? I told you. Apple juice. He gets apple juice every day. Now I'm standing there silent, and Karen says, Well, say something. I then tell her, Ma'am, that's not apple juice. It's an injection. Now, the next part might seem too insane to be true, but I kid you not, the screaming mom said this exact sentence to me. She said, Don't you dare lie to me. Everybody else has been saying the exact same thing, but I know the truth. You people have orange juice. I've seen it. Give my son that. Put orange juice in the bag. Now, all subsequent attempts to explain her have failed. She screamed loudly and disturbed other patients as well. The attending physician heard all the commotion and came to see what the matter was, and he also tried to explain that her son had in fact been given an injection. But she refused to believe that we weren't injecting her son with apple juice, and that juice could not be given intravenously. And with that, the awesome doctor disconnects the IV line, poured some of that nasty apple juice into a plastic cup, and told the mom to take a whiff to show her that it's not apple juice. And of course, she gags. She never asked for orange juice again, but I heard from the other patients that the mom had been blabbering about suing us for injecting her son with bad quality apple juice and then making a fool out of her. Now my friends, I I actually want to say that I'm baffled at this. I'm just going to leave this comment right here because I don't want to say it myself. How stupid do you have to be to believe that trained medical professionals will purposely inject juice into a patient? And this person right here says, I just showed this story to my mom who's a nurse and she believes that this would actually happen. Guys, listen, props to all of the doctors and nurses out there that have to deal with this kind of stuff on a regular basis. Now, let me first give you some background so you can get where people are coming from. My father left a few years prior. My mom had bought a very nice house with the money from the divorce and a few months after, she got herself a boyfriend. Now, at first, I was truly happy that she had moved on. But soon, I realized that she had fallen for some piece of low-life scum. Now, you need to understand that my father was an alcoholic and a narcissist, so my mom's normal meter was truly broken. Anybody treating her halfway decent, that didn't put their hands on her, etc., must have appeared like Prince Charming to her. So please, do not judge her too harshly for her choice, as I don't. Now, the new guy she was seeing was not only halfway decent, he actually treated her pretty well. He bought her flowers, they went out to eat regularly, etc. But what I realized that she did not was that he was a parasite. Now, the guy maybe had a hundred bucks to his name, and the only income he had was support from the state, which was a couple hundred bucks. Now, I can hear you asking, how can he afford flowers and going out? By living rent-free and having all of his costs paid for until he gets back on his feet. And one last thing, the guy really hated me. He would treat me like I was dirt. He soon starts to show an immense entitlement towards me. Basically, a few weeks after he moved into my mom's house, he took me aside and said that this is now his house, so now I have to follow his rules. Now, of course, I told him that this is my mom's house, not his, and I do not have to do a damn thing unless my mom tells me so. Now, he took that really badly, since he had an ego problem, as you probably already guessed. Now, I did try to tell my mom, but she would not believe me, since he always acted very nice to me when she was around. But as soon as she wasn't around, the cold war starts. He pulled a lot of small things, like demanding in a patronizing voice that I bring him some beer while he was watching TV with me. I would tell him to go get his own beer, and he would call my mom and tell her that he had asked me nicely to bring him beer. But I refused and insulted him instead. So of course, she told me to apologize and get him beer. I tried to explain, but she would not let me. So the guy kept being petty to establish dominance. After this whole story, I asked my mom why she would always believe him and not let me explain. Now apparently he had told her that I was super jealous that he was in the house, and I wanted to get rid of him by trying to make him look bad, so she backed him to show me that he's not going anywhere. Now time for the main act. I had gone out Friday until 3am. Now my mom was gone over the weekend for work, and he exploded. How dare I disrespect him like that, coming into his house this late. 
Now, I told him calmly that he does not get to declare a curfew for me, and my mom allows me to come home this late. He flips out even more and calls me a dirty liar. He then says to me, As long as you put your legs under my table and eat the food I provide, you will follow my rules. This is my house. And of course, being a smartass, I answered, Dude, this is my mom's and my house. You are a guest here. Now that pissed him off. He screamed saying that he's gonna kick me out of the house and I will not be allowed back until my mom returns. He also says that she likes him more than she likes me and can't wait to see the day that I move out and get out of his face. I then screamed back that he can't do this since it's not his house. I then threatened to call my mom. So he, emboldened by her backing him up all the time, told me to do just that. So I called my mom and put her on speaker and told her, he's trying to kick me out of the house till you come back Monday. And she didn't believe me, and she told me to put him on the line. So he starts by telling her that I disrespected him as the man of the house by coming home so late, and then lying to him about it being okay, and that I need to learn to respect him. He then said it's up to him how he disciplines me, since she's not there. So this is how the conversation went. My mom says, So, let me get this straight. I allow my son to be out until 3 o'clock, but you think you overrule my decision on my son, and you think it's okay to kick my son out of my house. So the guy then realized that he messed up. He tried to get her to take his side, but he only dug his hole deeper. He says, Well, he keeps not respecting me in my own house. If you let him win now, he will never respect me. My mom then responds, and you think that the right punishment for disrespect is to kick him out for two days? We'll talk about this later. So the guy then says to my mom, I am not done. You do not get to talk to me like this in front of him. If you don't punish him now, he won't respect me and I won't stand for that. Now, my mom then told him that apparently she thought the right punishment for his disrespect is to kick him out until Monday. He then says, if you kick me out, where am I supposed to go? Mom replies, I'm sure you can go to a lot more places than my son who has no money. You got 30 minutes to leave. I'll have the neighbor check and if you're still there in half an hour, he will call the police and you will be arrested for trespassing. So once my mom comes home, I told her how he kept pulling this on me and she said she was so sorry that she kept backing him up. Now, I tried to tell her many times that he treats me exactly like dad did when she wasn't around. But since he treats her so differently and acted so differently than my father, she believed him that I was jealous and tried to get rid of him. But when she heard him say those words my father said so many times, such as, you owe me respect since you live in my house, she suddenly realized that I was telling the truth all along while he was a liar. And this is why she got furious so fast. She never realized how badly he treats me and how entitled he acted since he had hidden it so well before. But when he started to talk about deserving respect in his own house from me, a house that he did not put a penny into but was somehow his, my mom caught on quick. So she finally saw through him and got all the evidence she needed, and I was telling the truth all along. They ended up breaking up that Monday. He never even got back into the house, as they met for coffee and she demanded her keys back. Now, originally she did want to give him a month, but he started to scream at her. How dare she kick him out of the house like this? and that now he would never get the respect from me that he's entitled to. So she told him that she's only here to ask for her keys back and that they're done. Guys, those who demand respect are almost never worthy of it. The guy definitely needs to learn that respect is earned and not given. I'm so glad it worked out for OP in the end and that the mom realized that the guy was pretty much good for nothing. Good riddance, if you ask me. So this story happened a while back and I finally found a place to tell it. So a little bit of backstory. I drive an old truck that kind of looks like a monster truck and it costs a lot of money. Now, not because of the car itself, but mostly the parts I put into it. Now, I live in a pretty good neighborhood, but it happens to be right next to the most busy road in my area. So on this particular day, I get a message from my friend saying that there's a problem at work and I'd better come over. I work at a computer repair shop, so if there's a problem where they have to call me in, it's usually a hundred or a thousand dollar problem that requires most hands on deck. So I get out of my house and drive off in a bit of a rush. A few minutes pass and I'm about three miles away from work. I then stop at a red light at an intersection. So the light turns green and I was in a rush, so I take off fairly quickly. And then, just as I'm about to clear the intersection, a big Mercedes SUV T-bones me. Now, luckily, it hit the rear passenger of the car, and not me directly. I almost pass out because of the shock and looked out my window to see who dropped a missile strike on the side of my truck. I get out and my truck is in pretty bad shape. 
Karen then flies out of her car and immediately starts to scream at me saying, What were you doing? You drove through a red light. I told her I'm sorry, but it was a green light for me. You ran that red light. Karen, in a quite accusatory tone, says, No, you didn't have the right of way. We had the right of way. It's not you. Now, I told her, explain to me how you had the right of way when my light was green. Karen then says, I don't have to explain anything to you. You are drunk. Now, I want to note that I am obviously (laughs) not drunk. And she says, Give me your license and insurance. I'm going to make sure you pay for all my damages. Now, I'm honestly surprised that she and her son weren't even hurt. Satan is most likely protecting his hellspawn from any harm, so she can be the biggest care in this world has ever seen. I told her, um, no, I had the right of way. My light was green and you ran that red light. And this was the wrong thing to say. Now, this woman was clearly in denial. She flips out and goes insane and she says, Excuse me, you drunk idiot. You honestly think I'm gonna pay for your truck that you probably pull out of a trash pile? I'm gonna call my lawyer husband right now to come sue your ass. Let me see your license. Now, I'm angry as hell, and I can see that her kid is pretty shaken up and scared that mommy keeps yelling, so I said, That's it, I'm gonna call the cops. So about 10 minutes later of yelling, three cop cars and an ambulance arrive. Now, Karen immediately runs to the officer and says, in the most sweet fake voice, Officer, it was horrible. This man is drinking and driving and he ran a red light, causing me to hit him and almost killed me and my son. You need to arrest him right now. So the officer then takes a good look at me and I said, that's not true, officer. This woman is lying to you. I will do whatever it takes to prove that I'm sober and there were a ton of witnesses to the accident and they can tell you that she's in the wrong. The police officer looks around and says, this looks like a pretty serious accident. Let's make sure nobody's hurt first before we get to who did what. Now at this point, a witness comes up and says that he caught everything on his dash cam and can replay the footage for the officer. And Karen, clearly seeing that she was going to get caught, says, Oh, there's no need to do that. We'll just exchange info and be on our way. The officer then says, I'm sorry, ma'am, but it's required that I know what happened to make a police report and which of you is in the wrong, so we'll be watching the cam footage together. So the witness then took the police officer to his car, where he then showed him the dash cam footage of Karen blowing the red light. He then checks us both with a breathalyzer, and I'm completely sober. Surprise. He then made the police reports, and Karen, knowing she was defeated, basically sat in her car, pouting. We ended up having to wait for tow trucks to come, because the vehicles were undrivable. Karen's husband showed up, but there wasn't a damn thing he could do about it, since everything was caught on camera. Thank goodness for witnesses and that dash cam footage. And that, my friends, brings us to another end of our slash entitled people. Guys, we survived another one. If you enjoy these crazy Karen stories today, do hit that thumbs up and subscribe. If you missed the last episode of our slash entitled people, an insane Karen tries to get OP jailed for life for skipping her Thanksgiving dinner. It's absolutely insane, so check it out if you haven't, and I'll see you guys in the next one. I love you.